The purpose of this video is to show you how we can use combine two formulas and find the final instantaneous velocity when we know the average velocity. So we know how to find the average velocity of a situation as long as we can measure the total change in distance over the total change in time that gives us the average velocity. Turns out there's another formula for average velocity and that is that your average velocity equals your initial, the O stands for original or initial, some books will use I, but V naught is my initial instantaneous velocity. So my average velocity equals my initial instantaneous velocity plus my final instantaneous velocity divided by two. That's true as long as you, any acceleration you have is constant, including zero. If I have no acceleration, these two are the same and I get v naught plus v naught divided by 2 would be v naught because your velocity is not changing. And this situation is the acceleration will be constant in all the labs that we do, that we work with. So if v naught is 0, then I just plug a 0 in here for v naught and I get the average velocity is vf over 2, which solves that the final velocity is equal to twice my average. So what we're going to do in this lab, we're, we'll have a table where we can find my change in x, which is just by change in position, divided my, by my change in time. Now that's from the beginning, okay, not the in intervals. So I take the total change in distance from when I started, when my v naught was 0, I divide by my total change in time from when I started. Don't make that mistake. Make sure you use the time from when you started and that gives me my v-bar, then I just multiply that by 2 to find my final velocity. I want to emphasize which delta t and delta x we're using because your first number would match no matter which way you do it. For my, <coughs> the way, when we did the constant, uh, constant velocity problem, we used our, our delta t, in this case, would be 0.67 and we divided by 0.2. And then when I did that, I got 0.3 for my average velocity, and then I've gotten uh, 0.6 for my final velocity. Everybody would get that, no matter how you work the problem. But if you're not careful, if you don't pay attention, you'll use delta x as 0.2, and you'll use the time difference between here, between 0.67 and 0.90. That's not what we want, because the formula we're using only works when our initial velocity is zero. We're assuming my initial velocity is zero. So that means I always have to take the distance from zero. So my delta x will be 0.2 and on my second one it will be 0.4 right here. And my time will be the actual time, 0.9. So you can use your TI calculator, which is why you'll notice over here in this uh, column. Twice this sometimes is a little off from this because I did it all in my TI calculator, which you can do also. If you've forgotten how, go look at the video that we did in an earlier lab where it shows you how to do that. But you take all of this delta x divided by this time. So if you, this may still, these numbers may still be in your calculator from the earlier lab. So if I put all these numbers in, and use my TI to subtract them, then I automatically have all those. Then I can divide this by this on my TI and get all those. Then I can multiply all those by 2 with my TI and get those. Or you can do it by hand, whichever way you prefer to do. Some people don't like messing with the TI. Good luck.